So I've had quite a few people asking me to do longer form YouTube videos showing some of the decision making processes that I use to choose a spot or gear or rigs or whatever. So I've done something a little bit different today. I've come out at the absolute worst time of the day in the worst conditions to try some rock fishing. It's way too calm in here. It's the bottom of the tide, it's the middle of the day. It's been bright and sunny, there is a few high clouds starting to come in now, so that might actually help. But I've picked a very ordinary spot, and I've done that for a reason, because a fairly stiff southerly's just come through, and out the front of the point where I wanted to go, it's just way too windy. But there's very little swell yet. That water is so clear. These are tough conditions, so I'm just gonna see if a little bit of burley, I don't have a lot of burley, I've got some stale bread that I've been collecting, and I'm gonna mix that up with some water and some cabbage weed and just start feeding it in. I'm going to see if by going light, as light as I can get away with, little sinker, fine leader, that sort of thing, whether I can actually pluck a decent fish out of these conditions. I certainly wouldn't put money on it. Let's see how I go. I brought the, um, the light thread line gear, nice long rod, light tip. I bought the blackfish gear as well, but I don't think I'm going to be catching any blackfish in these conditions. Anyway, I'll start getting that burly in. Let's see if we can turn lemons into lemonade. The first thing I do is add some seawater to the bread. Give it a good soak and really scrunch it up and mulch it. Squeeze as much air out of it as you can. You don't want any of the bread to float because all it's going to do is attract seagulls. That's about right. Now, just a little bit of uh, cabbage weed off the rocks and I add that as well. Stir it in. That burly's starting to look really good. So this is the rig I'm going to use. Just got two really small ball sinkers on here, the smallest ones you can get. One's running freely and the other one I've gone through it a couple of times with the line just to lock it in place because I actually want to keep it away from the bait a little bit today. Normally I'd let it run right down but with these calm clear conditions I reckon I need everything on my side. Just got about a 1.0 or 2.0 hook there and a bit of prawn and these prawns by the way have been thawed and refrozen about half a dozen times there pretty disreputable. I've got everything going against me. Out onto my chosen rock and I start putting some burley in. I like to throw the burley down really hard into the shallows and onto the rocky edges so that it breaks up even more. This also helps to get it past the seagulls. Now you don't need to cast very far when you're burleying like this. You actually want your bait to land where the burley's dispersing to. You don't want to cast out beyond it. Make contact with the, the rig immediately and feel for bites. You don't want to just let it sit there and plummet to the bottom because it'll get snagged up for sure. I like to keep that bait moving, just maintain contact with it, feel for bites, and if you feel any bites, react to them by lifting the rod. It's pretty snaggy country in there, so if it just sits there, it is going to get snagged. Rearrange my bait. <laughs> you can see I'm looking around for potential other spots, especially out the front there. I'm not real happy with where I am. It's just not happening here, and it's not too hard to see why. It's not a great bit of country. There's very little wave action, even though the swell's starting to build out the front. None of it's wrapping around the corner to give me the sort of white water that I'd really be looking for. There'd certainly be fish in here at the right stage of the tide, higher tide and a bit less light, but at the moment it's fairly barren. Alright, well that didn't work. No lemonade today. I've still got the same bait on. I haven't had a decent bite. So I reckon I'm going to have to bite the bullet take what's left of my burley and move out there into the teeth of the southerly and fish just behind a bit of a boulder out there. There's some wash starting to form up. Let's see if that makes a difference. It's definitely looking a little bit better out here. There's actually some wash and it's starting to run down through the various cracks and gutters and into slightly deeper water. I'm a bit more optimistic so I move my burley bucket up to the front and start throwing some burley in. Again, throwing it down into that broken area right on the edge to let the wave action smash it up a bit more and disperse it. And watch where your burley actually ends up going. It doesn't always go where you think it might. Sometimes it'll wash down another little gutter and go out through a chute. And that's where you want to be presenting your bait, where that burley's coming out. 
I really like that bommy a little bit further out there too. Surely there's going to be some fish here. I'm quite hopeful of maybe a drummer, maybe a brim or a trevally. Just wish it was a little less bright. Well, there's some dolphins out there, but even they seem to be just passing by. I just don't think there's a lot of life here at the moment. But I'm not beaten yet. I'm going to hang in there. Okay, that's a bite, and I've got him on. Not a lot of weight, though. You can probably tell by my body language that it's not what I'm looking for. That's a kelpie or kelp fish. They're pretty common around our rocky foreshores and they're not much good for anything, but I still take my time to carefully remove the hook and return him to the water. Unfortunately, it wasn't the only kelpie I caught either, and although they got a bit bigger, they still weren't what I was looking for. Oh dear. Still, it's worth taking a few seconds to just carefully get the hook out and put them back in the water. I tend to throw in a little bit more burly between each baiting up or even after each cast. I throw all my bait off cuts and scraps and prawn heads in as well. Don't worry if they don't all make it into the water, the local cleanup squad will take care of them. I'm just going to try a really short little lob in close this time and see if there's fish right under my feet because there's a bit of depth down there. Ooh, yep, yeah, that's a bite. And I've got him. And it's a little bit more weight too. Maybe this is what we're after. Come on, keep him out of the rough stuff. And no. <laughs> oh no, I thought that might have been a drummer, but it's not. Now, as you might have seen, I've gone to a Paternoster rig with the sinker on the bottom because I just didn't feel like I was getting down through all the toad fish and other stuff out there. So I thought there might be some better quality fish down deep. This is not one of them. <laughs> this is an Eastern Wirra or boot. And they're called a boot because they reckon the best way to cook them is to boil them up with an old boot and when the boot gets soft throw the fish away and eat the boot. <laughs> Maybe it's a myth, they could actually be quite good. Most of the fish in this family taste great, but I'll stick with the myth and let this one go. Thought I had a drummer on then for a second. Uh, I've caught lots of little kelp fish and one sweep and now this fella. Big mouth, look at that. Come on, mate. I'll let you go. Really important to put all these fish back. They all play such an important role in the ecosystem. Good looking fish. Pull pretty hard, too. All right, mate. Off you go. Keep trying. Sorry about the wind. I know it's noisy on the mic. There's not a lot I can do about it. It's really blowing out here. And I'm getting plenty of snags too. When you do get snagged up, just point the rod straight down the line, hold the reel and walk backwards until something gives. <sighs> so you're starting to get the idea why you don't go fishing in the wrong place at the wrong time because you just don't catch anything. All I've been catching is unwanted bycatch and snags. I think this bloke's about the only local that's actually on the feed and he looks like he could use a good meal too. <laughs> uh, another snag. I'm getting a little bit tired of this. Straight down the rod, break it off. And you know what? I reckon that's what my mates would call a go-homer. <sighs> well, that's it, a fail. And there's a lesson in that. When everything's wrong, often you won't catch anything. Take the kids to the beach, mow the lawn, do something else. Don't go fishing in the middle of a bright sunny day on a low tide with calm clear water. You're wasting your time. <laughs>